again. Glad you're all with me again um, for our Children's Church Talk. I'm going to start by telling you something about me. I love maths. I loved maths at school. It was my favourite subject. I still wish I was studying maths. That's how much I love it. So I'm going to do a wee maths quiz with you today. It's a wee bit easy, a wee bit hard. You should all be able to get some of the answers right. I want you to name the shapes, okay? First shape, what is this called? It's got one, two, three, four, five sides. What's it called? Of course, it's a pentagon. Pent means five. That's why the first five books of the Bible was called the Pentateuch. Pent means five. Now this was a wee bit harder. It's got a few more sides on it. It's got eight sides, so it's called an octagon. That's right, yes. Oct means eight. That's why an octopus is called an octopus, because it's got eight legs. Now that's fun. You're going to think, Paula, are you thinking I'm silly or something? This is far too easy. Well, this is trickier than you think. Yes, yes, yes. I know it's a square. It's obviously it's a square. But in maths, there's a special name for any shape with four sides. Do you know that? It's a quadrilateral. Quad means four. One, two, three, four. So any shape with four sides is called a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral. Another last one. This is for my pre-bubbles. You will definitely know this one. It is called a triangle. That's right. One, two, three sides on a triangle. And you see, that's because tri equals three. T-R-I equals three. Now, last Sunday was a special Sunday in the church. It was called Trinity Sunday. And it was a Sunday when we remembered the Holy Trinity. I wonder if you know what the Holy Trinity is? See? Holy Trinity. It's the three characters of God, three men of God, three parts of God, the Holy Trinity, with the TRI equal three. Do you know the names of the three parts of the Holy Trinity? There's God the Father, God the Son. Do you know the last one that's trickier? God the Holy Spirit. See, God the Father, I think, is quite easy. Because we sort of imagine him being white and being in charge of everything. And God the Son, we know is Jesus. And there's loads of stories about Jesus in the Bible. So it's easy for us to think of him. But I think God the Holy Spirit's a little bit trickier to understand. So I hope I bring something to you today about God the Holy Spirit. See, so it was way, way back, just after Jesus had gone back to heaven. Lots and lots of people from different countries were gathered in a big room, having a big celebration, a great meal. Then all of a sudden, this strong wind started blowing. They didn't know what was going on. Then even stranger, all the people who were friends with Jesus had a flame resting on top of their head. It just stood there like a flame randomly on their head. But they didn't get burnt at all. You see, what was happening was Holy Spirit was coming down and filling the disciples. God's Holy Spirit was coming inside and living inside all of Jesus' friends. And what was even more amazing, all of Jesus' friends could suddenly start to talk in languages, languages they had never even heard of. And what was brilliant, as the disciples were speaking in these languages, People from different countries could hear them explaining about God and Jesus in their own language. And they too became friends with Jesus and too believed that Jesus had died for their sins. It was amazing. It was called on a special day called the day of Pentecost. Pent meaning five and therefore it was 50 days after Easter. All adds up now, doesn't it? Well... The Holy Spirit did amazing things on that day of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit 
still does amazing, amazing things for us today. When we become friends with Jesus, the Holy Spirit still comes down and lives inside us. And you think, what does that mean? What's that? Why is that important? Well, I'm going to show you a wee example, a wee special demonstration here, okay? Now, we know, I know you knew, this really wasn't a flame lying on my head. This was a balloon, or it was a bit of fluffy rubber, which could be a balloon if I put some breath inside it. I remember the Holy Spirit was invisible, and my breath's invisible. But if I put breath inside this balloon, it becomes not just a bit of fluffy rubber, but it becomes something else. Let me show you. Now it can flop and bounce and float and fly, and if I let it go, all my breath comes out of it and has the power to fly around the room. Isn't that amazing? Well, the Holy Spirit inside you will give you special power too. The Holy Spirit inside you helps you to pray. It helps you to hear what God is saying to you. The Holy Spirit will give you special gifts like love and joy and peace and faithfulness, self-control and gentleness. All these things are the fruits of the Spirit. I'm sure some of you already recognise that. And even more amazingly, the Holy Spirit will give people amazing powers even still today. The Holy Spirit will allow people to lay hands on someone else and pray for them and they be healed. The Holy Spirit today will help some people speak in different languages, just like they did in the Bible, so they can sp spread God's word around. Holy Spirit may enable people to pray in the language of the angels. So these amazing gifts are still available from the Holy Spirit living inside you today. It's brilliant. Yes, God the Father, God the Son, they're easy for us, but the Holy Spirit it's really, really special too. And when he lives inside you, helps you as a mark, it becomes a mark, a sign, a seal that you are God's special child. Now today, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to pray. I'm going to say we prayer asking the Holy Spirit to help us pray. Then I'm going to blow up this balloon. While I'm blowing up this balloon, I want you to say your prayers. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and help you choose the right thing to pray for. Then, when we're finished, I'm gonna release the balloon and it'll fly around and it'll be just like the Holy Spirit bringing the prayer up to God, okay? So close your eyes. Holy Spirit, please help us as we pray. But don't forget to say your prayers. Okay, my balloon is blown up. So say your Amen as you conclude your prayers. And I'm going to let go of the prayer as it travels up to God. And we know God has heard us today as we've prayed. Just remember the Holy Spirit is present today. And if you believe in Jesus, he lives inside you. He is your comforter your helper, and he will bring you peace. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye.